And the next sign on the road was the Revelation 12 sign. Then we had the Star Bethlehem alignment, the Age of Aquarius alignment. And uh, now here we have uh, January 31st, this rare blue moon, once in a blue moon. It's an old adage for a reason. It's once in a blue moon means very rarely. So a blue moon is usually, you know, we have one full moon every month and one new moon every month. But occasionally it will fall to where we have two full moons in the same month. So we already had our full moon in January and now we're going to have another full moon in January. So that, that in itself is, you know, only happens once in a blue moon. It's pretty rare, but that's not the end of it. It even gets more rare because it is a total lunar eclipse on January 31st says almost two and a half years have passed since the moon last plunged completely into the earth's shadow. And then it tells where you'll be able to see it best and all of that. So we have a blood moon. So it's a blue moon and a blood moon. And then on top of that, it's also a super moon. So earth will also, I mean, the moon will also on that day be at its perigee point. So that is when the earth is, uh, or when the moon is closest to the earth. So it looks huge. So we call it a super moon. So what are the odds? What are the odds that all of these would coincide on the very same day on January 31st? And that's not the end of the coincidences either. Then we have the biblical feast day, which I will let this gentleman explain to you briefly for just a minute or two in a second. But it, it's a feast day that's marked by us showing our fruit to the Lord, the fruit of our lives. Or the actual feast is about a fruit offering, you know, which we know the fruit of our lives are our works for the Lord. So that's our offering to the Lord. In addition to the astronomical signs and the biblical holy days that are laid out for us as a map, then we also see some odd things around us in the natural, in the political realm, and in natural disasters. So I thought all of that was odd. And then I thought it was odd that President Trump is having the State of the Union address, I believe, on the 30th. And then the seven-day earthquake warning from this earthquake we just had would would be up to January 31st for a major earthquake, which is odd because QAnon had another drop of information, a uh, big one on the 18th and 19th. And one of his first posts was, timing is everything, state of the union, Q. Uh, 118 on the 18th, just a few days ago, he says, the great awakening. 2018 will be glorious. Then he dropped these messages, which say Judgment Day and the shot heard around the world. It's a blood moon, a blue moon, and a super moon all at once. This in the book of Genesis, the Lord says that the sun, moon, and stars were given to mankind for signs and seasons. Now, see the moon in a blood moon stage, a full lunar eclipse. Then you will know these are indicators of heavenly signs. The Jewish Talmud has a lot to say on the subject of lunar eclipses. In Sukkot 29a, it is written, when the moon is in eclipse, it is a bad omen for Israel. If the face is as red as blood, it is a sign that the sword is coming to the world. The 266 days is the number of days between conception and birth. The September 23rd sign was the 266th day on the Gregorian calendar, and December 20th was the 266th day of the year on, the, on God's calendar, on the biblical calendar. Okay, so this is when the Palestinians began, sorry, the, the United Nations began to meet, and then the baby is born the next day on the seventh day of Hanukkah on December 21st when they reject Trump's proposal of Jerusalem being the capital of Israel. They, they reject that. So this represents the baby being born on the 266th day of the year. Okay, and then Leviticus 12 says from that time we have to count off uh, seven days and then on the eighth day the baby is to be circumcised and then we count off 33 days before the woman is purified okay so if the woman gives birth on December 21st if that was the actual day of the abomination um, we count off eight days and then we count off 33 days this comes to January 30th um, 
and then the next day is the day that she can enter the temple she's been cleansed on the 31st right at the same exact day as the blood moon people wonder what is the biblical significance of Tu Bishvat? Is there a biblical significance of Tu Bishvat? And the answer is, of course there is. Especially in the book of Leviticus, Vayikra, it talks about when you come into the land of Israel, what do you got to do? Plant trees. First three years, when a fruit tree is planted, a beautiful tree like this lemon tree is planted, you're not allowed to touch the fruit for the first three Fourth years. Year, the fruit shall be holy Kodesh, and you shall take it to Jerusalem, to the temple in Jerusalem, to praise God with the fruit of Israel in the, in the fourth year. Okay, so my son Mason had this dream a couple nights ago. He saw Earth, and he saw a planet coming down towards Earth, and then, which, you know, what's crazy is the the planet that he saw was half red, half blue. But the thing that took me by surprise was that my son is only eight years old and he has no understanding of what the blue and red represents. He has never heard that before. So as soon as he mentioned, he was like, but mommy, the planet was red and blue. My ears perked and I'm like, what was your dream again? Another synchronicity is just the term. This is a blue moon, blood moon. It's a blue blood moon. And we know blue blood means of noble birth. So even though the blue bloods, the cabal, they take these beautiful signs that God gives us, like the sign of the rainbow that it actually speaks about in the Bible. And they take something beautiful like the sign of the rainbow and they twist it to make it symbolize sexual perversion. And they even stamp the word pride on it. Pride of all things, the sin that brought Satan down, you know, that the Bible clearly says his sin was pride. So to me, that's similar to this. You know, blue blood has come to be synonymous with these elites and the cabal. But blue blood, we know that we are the nobility. We know that we are children of the king, that we are children of the most high God. Although we know that the cabal, the blue bloods in that respect must come down, that that network is being taken down right now. And that's the great tribulation that just like in childbirth, there is that pain of the birth and uh, that you have to go through that, but it's all forgotten once, once the child is born. And uh, that's what we'll see with this great tribulation, that it's a blessing that this framework, this prison that has been built around us is coming down. And uh, so I'm not going to see the blue blood supermoon as any sort of bad thing or bad sign. I'm going to see it as the rise of the true nobility, the children of the most high God. And, you know, if that if that requires, you know, if that requires tribulation, then so be it. I trust God.